I am that, <laughs> thou art that. But it's usually interpreted no object, you know, no thing, consciousness only, I am that. So it's very much in a philosophical, religious, uh, Vedanta assumption of um, transcendence of all related conditions. <laughs> and they say, I am that. But fundamentally, they are saying the same thing. I am the power of the cosmos. In yoga, we're not eliminating any related condition whatsoever, and we're actually saying related conditions are the very means by which we uh, know ourselves to be what we are. You know, so yoga is the embrace of the body and the body's relatedness to its own experience. You know, so there's all that practice now in the yoga studios, etc., in Melbourne now, that enable a person to go to feel, viscerally feel, <laughs> no, life itself, that they are that. Yeah. They are the power of the cosmos. And I, I know what you're saying because um, we are so, the, as I just said before, society is so uh, programmed to assume that we live in a material world that, you know, even in the philosophies, I'm not the body, is a big statement, you know, that has perpetuated this uh, dumbing down of and bringing the, the life of Mother Nature into the idea of materiality that's not worth anything, including the body is materiality that's not worth, sex, materiality, not worth women not worth anything you know we've been so conditioned i can say that in my experience in the, you know being in japan and china you know which are dreadfully programmed places of you know patterned materiality assuming that to be the human life you know and the productivity of that materiality being the purpose of a human life <laughs> polluting the planet and everything so i've found among all demographics of any kind of person, you can say to a person, you're the power of the cosmos. And it is a sincere statement that requires some sincere thought and inquiry to respond to that. Especially when we put it as a question, are you the power of the cosmos? Answer me please, yes or no. And they have to go, uh. And I've found that all kinds of people can, will be stopped in their tracks and have a new framework to look at their own life that they didn't have before. So I do feel it's worth putting that out, putting that out, putting that out as like a educational um, mantra uh, that is worth putting out into the world now because people are able to, if they give it two seconds of thought, they are able to feel something about it. And some people I've found get it straight away. I was in Florida and there was a woman there in her late um, 40s, not so, you know, but she was, she'd had a hard life. She had five children, a Cuban woman, hard life, uh, a mother of five. And I said this in the class, you're the power of the cosmos. I think I singled her out. Yeah, you are the power of the cosmos. Yeah, you are a mother. Look what you've done bringing forth five beautiful, and she started to weep then and there and said, thank you so much. She wept like this. Nobody's ever said that to me before. Not even my own children. <laughs> she said that. So she got it. It's possible that she could have walked out of there scot-free from that time onwards and lived her own form. But I feel it's worth saying saying again and again, maybe not those particular words, but words like that. You know, you're the wonder of life. You know, you came out of your mother's, out of your mother's womb, like, wow, how did that happen? You're moving and breathing here in this life, you know. You have this relationship with the planet, you know, a visceral, actual relationship with air and light and food and... <laughs> And people can feel that if we say it. Exactly.
I remember being a young New Zealander, maybe I was like 19 or 20 or something, and that statement, you know, and it was literally about a tree, how I have as much validity <laughs> to be here yeah. than that, a tree. Yeah. And I have the same beauty of the tree this, that's in this human form. Yeah. And I, it's very interesting now reflecting on that is that as a 19 year old, I didn't have that view. And, and even feeling like I'm not valid. I was not successful so much in my father's uh, intentions that he had for me. I, was, I couldn't even do it very well. I wasn't interested in algebra and calculus. I had a go at it for a bit in physics. Went to university for a bit. But it was also dull and boring. So I wasn't good at it. So I didn't feel um, <clears throat> that I had pleased my father's, and he was an academic and so forth. So I didn't feel very valid in my existingness. You know, I think I was reasonably okay and healthy, but I can see how that turns into depression and dangerous uh, mental health states if you don't think you belong here. But each to our own, you know, you, you will find your language of the same uh, essential matter and talk to your demographic about that in our own ways. This Buddhist friend of mine said, the only true meditation is this. <laughs> you know, like shock and awe to realize that you exist in this form. So I tried it in China. So the room full of people and they spoke, that was translated. And the meditation was, wow, I'm the power of the cosmos. <laughs> and they all sat there and that, they did that. They mimicked me, I did it. And then they spoke it. <laughs> and then, wow, this body, it's a pure intelligence. Heartbeat, breath, <laughs> like that. 